Good morning students. Hope you all are fine and healthy. In the previous video, I dealt with the reported speech. Today I am going to deal with George Orwell's A Nice Cup of Tea, the prose lesson from Unit 2. Before I begin, here's the thought for the day. Stop waiting for a better day to come. Live in the moment and enjoy it. And today will become the day you have been waiting for. The meaning of the thought. Life is short and it can pass away very fast. Therefore, it is totally wrong to postpone our happiness by waiting for good days. We either live in past or future, thus miss the beautiful present. Those who enjoy the present, for them, every day becomes a day which they were waiting for. Let's move on to the lesson. A Nice Cup of Tea is an essay by English author George Orwell, first published in the London Evening Standard on 12th January 1946. This is a discussion of the craft of making a cup of tea. First, let's know something about the author. Eric Arthur Blair, better known by his pen name, George Orwell was an English novelist, essayist and critic. He was born on 25th June 1903 in Motihari, India. The son of a British civil servant, he spent his first days in India where his father was stationed. He was a man of strong opinions who addressed some of the major political movements of his times, including imperialism, fascism and communism. Orwell wrote literary criticism, poetry, fiction and polemical journalism. He is best known for the allegorical novella Animal Form and the dystopian novel 1984. The Times ranked him second on a list of the 50 greatest British writers since 1945. Now let's see something about tea. How many of you love drinking tea? Though we are fond of many health drinks, tea is something different and special. It stimulates our brain as well as behavior. What is tea? Tea is either the tea plant or Camellia sinensis or the dried leaves and buds of the tea plant or the beverage made from these buds and leaves. In another words, tea is an aromatic beverage commonly prepared by pouring hot or boiling water over cured or fresh leaves of the Camellia sinensis, an evergreen shrub native to East Asia. Have you seen Camellia sinensis? Look at the picture. This is Camellia sinensis. All the teas come from the same plant. Origin of tea. Tea originated in the region encompassing today's North Burma and Southwestern China where it was used as a medicinal drink by various ethnic groups in the region. According to Chinese legend, the history of tea began in 2737 BCE when the Emperor Shen Nong, a skilled ruler and scientist, accidentally discovered tea. While boiling water in the garden, a leaf from an overhanging wild tea tree drifted into his pot and this is how tea was discovered. History of tea in India India is one of the largest tea producers in the world although over 70% of its tea is consumed within India itself. It is said that in the early 1820s the British East India Company began large-scale production of tea in Assam, India, of a tea variety traditionally brewed by the C. 
sing poor people by the turn of the century assam became the leading tea producing region in the world now let us see some of the different types of tea there are many types of tea some of the popular varieties are black tea green tea herbal tea white tea oolong tea rooibos tea are there any health benefits of drinking tea yes tea burns fat it prevents some types of cancer it prevents heart diseases it protects the brain in old age it kills bacteria and viruses and it also prevents diabetes i hope you have got enough information about tea now let's move on to the process of making tea using the 11 steps given by george orwell first of all one should use indian or slonish tea though china tea has virtues there is not much stimulation in it one does not feel wiser braver and more optimistic after drinking it secondly tea should be made in small quantities that is in a teapot tea out of an urn is always tasteless while army tea made in a cauldron tastes of grease and whitewash the teapot should be made of china or earthenware silver or britannia ware teapots produce inferior tea and enamel pots are worse though curiously enough a pewter teapot is not so bad thirdly the pot should be warmed beforehand this is better done by placing it on the hob than by the usual method of swilling it out with hot water fourthly the tea should be strong for a pot holding a quart if you are going to fill it nearly to the brim 6 heap teaspoons would be about right the author prefers one strong cup of tea to 20 weak ones fifthly the tea should be put straight into the pot no strainers muslin bags or other devices to imprison the tea in some countries tea pots are fitted with little dangling baskets under the spot to catch the stray leaves which are supposed to be harmful actually one can swallow tea leaves in considerable quantities without ill effect and if the tea is not loose in the pot it never infuses properly sixthly one should take the tea pot to the kettle and not the other way about the water should be actually boiling at the moment of impact which means that one should keep it on the flame while one pours seventhly after making the tea one should stir it or better give the pot a good shake afterwards allowing the leaves to settle eighthly one should drink out of a good breakfast cup that is the cylindrical type of cup not the flat shallow type the breakfast cup holds more and with the other kind of one's tea is always half cold before one has well started on it ninthly one should pour the cream of the milk before using it for tea milk that is too creamy always gives tea a sickly taste tenthly one should pour tea into the cup first by putting the tea in first and stirring as one pours one can exactly regulate the amount of milk whereas one is liable to put in too much milk if one does it the other way round lastly tea unless one is drinking it in the russian style should be drunk without sugar if you sweeten it 
you are no longer tasting the tea you are merely tasting the sugar you could make a very similar drink by dissolving sugar in plain hot water now let's come to the conclusion the overall purpose of the entire essay is to raise awareness of the forgotten delicacies of tea due to the advances of civilizations around the world the purpose complements the central idea of creating the perfect cup of tea look at the glossary some difficult words are given you can see cauldron cauldron is a big pot used for boiling second one white wash a solution of lime and water for whitening pewter a gray alloy of tin with copper and antimony swill wash or rinse out quart a unit of liquid curious interesting mainstays something on which something else is based air is irish for ireland acutely intensely controversial arguable or disputable virtues admirable qualities despised hated stimulation excitement optimistic positive or hopeful rationing restricting the consumption of a scarce commodity during war strainers a device used for straining mysterious incomprehensible etiquette socially acceptable behavior dangling hanging freely or suspended spout a pipe like opening in a teapot liable responsible dear students please go through all the difficult words and learn it before winding up let's take a quick glance of all the 11 rules first rule indian or slonish tea use indian or slonish tea second rule small quantities prepare in small quantities in a teapot third rule warm teapot teapot should be warmed beforehand fourth rule strong tea tea should be strong fifth rule no strainers do not use strainers or muslin bags Sixth rule hot tea take the pot to the boiling kettle Seventh rule enhance flavor stir or shake the pot to enhance the flavor Eighth rule breakfast cup drink tea in a good breakfast cup Ninth rule no cream don't add creamy milk 10th rule the sequence add milk to tea not vice versa 11th rule no sugar do not add sugar if you follow george orwell's these 11 rules you can make a perfect cup of tea Hope you have understood the lesson. Please go through the lesson at least twice. Also go through the glossary. Contact me in case of clarification. Just keep going and stay strong. Don't let anyone dull your sparkle. Thank you.